Good morning. My name is Dawn Echeverry, E-T-C-H-E-V-E-R-R-Y, and I'm the president of the Nevada State Education Association. Um, the Nevada State Associ Education Association has been the voice of Nevada educators for over 120 years. Elected officials from both sides of the aisle have talked about record appropriations for K-12 education, while this is good news, it is important to note the severity of the issue in our public schools caused by chronic underfunding, as well as the work that remains, um, remains to reach optimal funding and ensure public do dollars go where they are most needed. This is why NSCA has been saying it's time for 20. Time for 20 means a 20% raise for every Nevada educator, $20 an hour minimum wage in our schools, and an average class size of 20 students. Since the COVID pandemic, educators left their jobs in record numbers due to low pay and severely low morale. At the midpoint of the school year, there are still thousands of school vacancies and with many more positions being covered by long-term sub substitutes or in some of our rural areas, privately contracted virtual teachers. A December report of the Economic po Policy Industu Institute found there is a widespread national teacher shortage that is specifically especially severe here in Nevada. They found that the current shortage is not the result of insufficient number of qualified teachers, but rather low pay and the increasing stressful work environment. An average pay differential between teachers and similar college graduates in the job market has grown by 23.5%. In his recommended budget, Governor Lombardo highlighted a record investment in education, and it is true he, rec he recommends increasing per pupil funding by about $2,000 next year. However, this is still 4,693 4 less per pupil than the amount the Funding Commission identified as optimal. Instead of approaching optimal funding, money that could be used for our schools is being held back. $1.6 billion in the Rainy Day Fund and $733 million in the Education Stabilization Fund. With billions of dollars available for public education and educator vacancies at crisis levels, GovRec included no specific proposal to address educator shortage or salaries. Contrast this with other states who have similar and available resources. In early 2022, New Mexico Governor Lujan Grisham announced an average raise of 20% for all New Mexico educators. Last year, New Mexico saw a 34% drop in teacher vacancies, a direct result of salary increase and investment in the hardworking New Mexico educators. Nevada could see those same results, but it will take t bold action and true investment. That is why NSCA has been calling on Nevada, Nevada's elected leaders to fund Time for 20. And time and time again, we have pointed to significant resources available. With billions of dollars in reserves, there is more than enough to cover a 20% across the board educator raise, estimated by the commission to cost about $650 million a year. Instead, dollars meant for schools are being stashed away. A proposal by the legislative Democrats have added $250 million to educator raises, representing a good down payment on time for 20. Are However, you, thank you so much. Are you about to wrap it up? I thought I you were going to wrap it up earlier, so Sorry. I didn't want to cut you off. However, you. due to the mechanisms of the proposal and the new funding formula, certain school districts still have res won't have the resources for these raises. Thank you. Thank you so much. And yeah, if we can leave public comment to two minutes, we have a lot of people today and um, we're only allowing 15 early on um, and then hopefully we'll get some more public comment at the end today. Madam Chair, Chris Daly, Nevada State Education Association. The Commission on School Funding was created by SB 543 in the 2019 session and charged with recommending optimal funding for Nevada schools. They utilized a study conducted by Augen, Blake, Palick, and Associates from 2018 and quantified the level of spending recommended in that report. Three weeks ago, Chair Guy Hobbs presented the Commission's report, attempting to synthesize much of the three years of their work in their 400-page report. In a handful of slides, in only a handful of slides. On one slide in particular, uh, it provides a great deal of perspective on the state of education funding in Nevada, even considering an additional billion dollar appropriation in the governor's recommended budget. 
So if you uh, take a look at this slide, with additional state revenue, GovRec proposes increasing per pupil funding by around $2,000. Overall increases during the pandemic years to per pupil funding in Nevada were de minimis. However, over the same time period, inflation in the cost of operating school districts has skyrocketed, including about 15%, I'm sorry, increasing about 15% from 2020 to today. So inflation takes up a lion's share of the overall proposed increase to K-12 funding in GovRec. For example, Actual per pupil funding in, 20, in fiscal year 20 was $4,789 below optimal funding. Projected forward to 2024, even with that extra $2,000 per pupil, Nevada would still be $4,693 below optimal funding, only closing the per pupil gap to get to optimal funding by $96. Now what? In future fiscal years, while we likely won't have this level of inflation, we also aren't likely to have record surpluses. This is why it's necessary to pursue new revenue streams for public education and modernize existing revenues moving forward. The Commission on School Funding has recommended two new revenue streams supported by NSEA, and there are other strong proposals in the works. We encourage legislators to keep moving forward toward optimal funding, not just running in place. Meanwhile, we remain concerned about impacts of the new formula on rural districts. While all but three districts technically come out, come out of the SB 543, 543 freeze, most rural districts are still negatively affected by the new funding formula. I hate to cut you off. Are you about done? Can you mind uh, Sure thing. So eight rural districts are projected to have increases less than the cost of doing business. Uh, we hope that this committee uh, digs into that uh, and fixes this uh, mechanical issue. Thank you. Thanks. Next of all, the comic. Good morning, Alexander Marks with the Nevada State Education Association. Um, so with the record revenues that my colleague has uh, just mentioned, the significant appropriations are opposed for the State Education Fund, um, and that's great news. But despite all this, it seems that much of the focus of the legislature has now shifted from increasing revenue to optimal funding for our students to demanding greater accountability and transparency. So like all education stakeholders, NSEA is supportive of greater transparency and accountability, especially when it comes to the stewardship of our public funds. Um, even Senator Mo Dennis in the first hearing on the funding formula stated that the second most important guiding principle was transparency. Um, this included the creation of an annual uh, SB 543 created the uh, sorry a uh, creation of an annual report with a description of personnel employed and services provided by the district in each public school during the previous year um, as well as anticipated changes moving forward. So districts are required to post this information on their website and schools are required to provide written copies to parents of each child at each school. So in response to the passage of AB 4, uh, 495 from the 21 session, the Commission on School Funding submitted their report on optimal funding to the legislature last November. Appendix 1 of that report details how the new funding would be used as districts as it becomes available. The first priority is hiring and retention of high quality staff in a competitive labor market. This priority aligns closely with NSEA's Time for 20. Other priorities include increasing equitable education opportunities, improving student and family supports, and investing in facilities. NSEA would caution the legislature that greater accountability cannot be measured by student performance on standardized tests. As NES, NEASN President Vicki Crydell said, any educator will tell you that testing-focused schools lose hours of valuable, authentic teaching prep time. This practice adds to the already high-stress job that classroom teachers now have. So with our glaring shortage, we hope accountability is instead measured by strategies that ensure our schools are filled with qualified educators who have the tools they need to ensure every Nevada student has access to a high-quality education. Accountability means using funds where they are needed most, like pay increases for every Nevada educator. Accountability means using funds where they are needed most, like class size reduction. Accountability means using funds where they are needed most, like school safety. That is why NSCA is proposing the Time for 20 campaign, as well as the Respect Educators Act. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning, legislatures. My name is Jennifer Malater, and I have been working at Dilworth, a Title I middle school in Washoe County for 13 years. I am pleading for an increase in funding for education, especially teacher salaries, by a minimum of 20%. As a wife and mother with a master's degree, we could not afford to send our eldest son to college, and he ended up joining the National Guard so that the military could pay for his university. Although his dream has always been Army, he wanted to wait until his degree was finished so he could be an officer rather than an officer enlist. The wages I had been paid for much of his life did not allow me to support my own child in his educational journey. Additionally, I have been physically assaulted directly twice by students and indirectly more times than I can count because there's simply not enough educators in the building to properly monitor and manage behavior. Why would anyone come to teach in Nevada? 
when even with a $2 billion increase still puts this state at 30% below the national average. Per pupil funding is abysmal, which impacts the student performance statewide. My two younger boys are in kindergarten and second grade, sharing the same special education teacher, which is unjust to my boys as their grade levels are drastically different. We need to recruit and retain our teachers, but how is that possible when someone with my degree can go into another field and make a significant amount more money without the fear of being assaulted at work? There are countless stands in Nevada that must there are countless stands Nevada must take to change the trajectory of our education system and it has to start now. There is an ample amount of funds in the education stabilization account with more being put into it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the rainiest of rainy days in our state's history. These funds should be used today to support the Time for 20 as well as the Respect for Educators Act. If we can get more adults in the building and classrooms, then we could actually teach without the decline of behaviors in our own mental health. Being able to teach will increase our student performance, but with such shortfalls, anything less than 20%, there will not be gains in Nevada. It's not that we aren't trying, there's just not enough of us. Good morning, lawmakers. Thank you for allowing me to speak here today. My name is Justin Trevinas. I'm a special education teacher in the Strategies Program at Galena High School in Reno. I am also a member of the Washoe, Washoe Educator Association. I'm a co-teacher of the self-containment program with students in the autism spectrum that have moderate to severe deficits in social, emotional, and communication skills. <clears throat> I'm here today to tell you my story. As a child, I was diagnosed with pervasive developmental disorder, not otherwise spe specified, which is someone that has difficulties in social and language development. I needed a lot of help growing up. I required a 1-1-A from grades 1 through 11, and I also had speech and language services in school and private services for 14 years. I wasn't supposed to talk, learn, make friends, or even go to college. In fact, I did all those. On top of that, I earned a master's degree in special education. I am married with two children, and I own a home in Reno. I have, I have all this because of the educators that have inspired me to be where I am. I want to help young children with disabilities like I do. Children with disabilities need love, care, and appropriate education, just like I had. I work with students that can be violent, and I've hurt other people, including myself. This is because they do not have the ability to manage their emotions, and it would take a long time for them to learn how to. I have also had, have, had the students escape the school, and I've had to make sure they didn't run to the street and get hit by a car, or even suspended for violence against peers and staff. There are students that use an assistive technology device to communicate at a minimal level. I even have students that need occasional diaper change. Because of the dedication and the effort I put in my craft, my students love being in school. In fact, they're even well liked by their peers, teachers, school staff, and administrators at Galena High School. I am also here today because I want to emphasize how important it is for you all to help public school educators of all roles. Due to the lack of investment in our education system, we are in the brink of peril. We are losing too many teachers in our schools in Nevada and all over the country. This system is not allowing people with reason to become a teacher. In fact, there are even teachers t take, talking people out of the, being a teacher in the public school system. Why should teachers continue to teach when they're not being supported by the local and state government? I don't want to cut you off, but you've kind of gone beyond two minutes. But if you could submit your um, statement right, that'd be greatly appreciated. We'll move to the next public comment. Okay. Um, hello, my name is Jessica Frenani. Um, I have a master's degree in education and I am an elementary special education resource teacher in Washoe County School District. Um, this is my sixth year in education and there really hasn't been a single year that I haven't contemplated leaving. Um, I'm making public comment here today because my special education students need more support than I alone or really any special educator like my colleague here can give them. Nevada has a critical staffing crisis, particularly in SPED. The amount of education time spent working outside of contract hours, large caseloads, time spent dealing with dangerous students for those in self-contained rooms and so on, far exceeds that of a school psychologist, for example, who is paid a triple digit salary on average. Average. The starting pay for a teacher in special education in Washoe County is $41,000 with a bachelor's degree. A colleague of mine has a caseload of 44 resource students when the cap is 23. That is nearly 100% over max. This is unacceptable. 
I am calling on the legislature to support special education educators and students by increasing funding per pupil, increasing pay for special education educators, including paraprofessionals, and decreasing max caseloads so teachers can work in a safe and productive environment. This can be done by utilizing money in the rainy day education fund to increase all teacher salaries as well as to increase the percent that the state pays towards special education students. Every day I see, see small miracles unfold before my eyes watching an intellectually disabled student read for the first time, seeing students pass general education tests to name a few. These miracles are the result of hard work and grit with more funding though in place for teachers and students, students will grow even more. For now though, teachers in special education and education in Nevada in general are treading in a house that is flooding with water, but the ceiling keeps getting closer and we are running out of air. Thank you. Hello, um, my name is, uh, <coughs> sorry, um, my name is Pablo. I'm a first year of a uh, guest teacher for Washington Sc School District. Uh, hundreds of teachers in state of Nevada pack into the valley on f February 10th, demanding legislature to fix our troubled school and raise our raise uh, the education funding. None of this started out with at the number of students who don't have a lesson teacher. Many school districts rely on substitute teacher and guest teacher to fail in the classroom when many certified teachers resign or who are being sick um, all the week long due to uh, personal and health reasons due to broken ed education system. Uh, this education source caused many Mediterranean cancer to create more students into one classroom. For example, when I studied at Huck High School, I was shocked to see what there is 35 to 40 plus students in my classroom. I asked myself that does Huck is overcrowded or does the school was so uh, because of a school was uh, built last year, there's a brand new school. Uh, I, I experienced having a large classroom inside of over sometimes 25, 30, 35, 40 students in one classroom. It's not such a hug, but it's all across the school, such like No Valley, Reed, and Reno High School. This will affect my teaching ability and my classroom management. So some students will likely not pay attention to someone who needs help. That sign means I have a larger class size in the nation. This also increases student behavior as a result that many staff and teacher age are leaving and many of them don't want to apply for this position because their pay rate is very low, twelve dollars per hour. This is a result many students who may not be able to learn or have a or have a trauma that leads to attack or attack teacher that happened in Dilworth Middle School in December. I will ask you to please increase the education funding, not lower education requirement. This funding is not such waste teacher salary, but increase staff, teacher assistant, and higher mental health to support students as well as combine student behavior. Decrease its class size to 20, uh, 20 students per classroom. Increase the learning environment, such like a new bus driver, and many more. Thank you so much. We have time for two more public comment. Thank you. Hi, my name is Brent Busboom. Uh, I'm in my 24th year of teaching, 21 of them at Reno High School. During my 24 years, I've won numerous awards, including Teacher of the Year. My students consistently have some of the highest AP English scores in the state. And I say this not to impress you, but to impress upon you that I take education seriously. I want you to think seriously about education because my argument, simply put, is this. Teachers don't want to teach in Nevada. Want proof? In 2015, Nevada had a statewide teacher shortage of 1,000 teachers. Seven years later, in 2022, it almost tripled to 2,700. Let me tell you about my daughter. She's 18 years old. She's never had a B in her life. Her SATs are in the high 1300s. <clears throat> She's great with kids. She's a catch. She's even thought about going into teaching. But in her words, there is no way I will ever teach in Nevada. Well, let me tell you about my current student teacher. She's smart. She knows how to connect with students. Her work ethic, it's extraordinary. She's even bilingual, but she doesn't want to teach in Nevada. She's looking out of state. 
There's thousands of people like my daughter and my student teacher, people who would make amazing teachers, but they don't want to teach in Nevada. Look, here's the deal. The governor wants to set aside billions of dollars, either in a rainy day fund or in a stabilization account, but I guarantee you one thing, and you can take this to the bank, it's raining now. Over the last three years, if you include 2023, inflation has been 19.9%. So let me be clear. If you don't fund education high enough to let districts give us a 20% raise, it's a pay cut. If you give us a 15% raise, it's a pay cut. 17% pay cut. 19% it's a pay cut. Do you want more teachers to leave? Then remember, if it's not 20%, it's a pay cut. Thank you. Buenos dias. Good morning. Uh, my name is Nicolette Andrini. I'm a seventh and eighth grade Spanish teacher at DePoli Middle School in Reno. I wanted to make public comment to show you my longevity in teaching. Um, I started when I was 19 years old. I got my sub license. Um, I've worked at Title I schools, Roger Corbett, Echo Loader, in elementary school. Um, I've also taught after school Spanish at Hunsberger and Collin Ranch and Roy Gom. Um, so I love teaching so much when I was 19, got my sub license, and fast forward, I've had my own classroom for 18 years. I wanted to retire as a 30 year teacher, as my mother did. She was also a middle school Spanish teacher, 30 years at Dilworth Middle School. I can't do it. Um, I love my job and I love the kids. And when I teach Spanish, my approach is to bond with the child. And at middle school, I, I see them as the whole child and I, I feel like I'm their counselor and I really like care about their mental health. Then they learn Spanish. They can't learn with subs constantly in and out. Um, I get called to cover other classes where there's vacancies and I'm happy to do so, but those kids don't know me and I'm in a classroom of 35 to 40 and they don't respond it's just a waste of time and then I go back and I lose my prep period because I'm helping a colleague because we can't get subs um, so I just wanted to back up that we do need a 20% raise we, we absolutely do me in my, my 18th year of teaching like and I look at the salary schedule I'm not gonna be able to retire in 30 years I'm, I'm not gonna make it um, I'm looking at options after this year just just to stay afloat. So I hope that everybody here has heard our stories and, and takes that into um, account. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Emily Riggin, and I'm a public educator in Carson City. I teach at Carson High School. And I just wanted to take an opportunity to illustrate the reality of the teaching that is happening in this current climate. Uh, my high school English classes are overly crowded with more students than I can adequately serve. I do not teach honors classes. I choose to teach um, struggling students, but my classes are full of the lowest and media students, and every one of my 30 desks are full. That's a ratio of 30 to 1, with at least a third of these students struggling with basic literacy skills due to learning disabilities, language acquisition, mental health concerns, and unstable home lives. The strain of staff shortages means that the resources that could be used to support student learning are stretched further and further and are not enough. But how do we attract people to this difficult and demanding job when new teachers can make more money as assistant managers at Forever 21? Such is the choice that the student teacher who is interning down the hall for me is having to make. Our students are, su <coughs> excuse me, are suffering from this deficiency that stems from the state funding. I see it every day and it wears on my soul and I love this profession. I feel helpless in my capacity to effectively reach all of these students. How do we persevere in the face of failure? So I'm asking the committee to consider the time for 20, um, redirecting all possible funds to education in order to support Nevada's future, um, because public education is the net by which we can support all individuals in the state. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Melinda Remersma, and I am a third grade teacher at Sonoma Heights elementary school in Winnemucca. I am also the president of UCN, representing all of the certified and classified staff in our 15 rural counties. While I'm appreciative of the governor for recognizing the importance of public education and proposing a $2 billion increase to education funding, unfortunately, the proposal misses the mark for actually making a long-term difference in the education of our students in Nevada. 
As NSDA has pointed out, due to inflation, all the increase will be doing is giving a minimal increase to, her, to per pupil spending, which is thousands of dollars short of the optimal funding our students deserve. On top of that, our rural districts who are now in hold harmless under the new funding formula will not see anywhere close to the increase of $2,000 per student. This will ultimately keep us far from the op optimal funding amount. Not only is this going to make it very difficult for us to negotiate any type of salary increase for our current teachers, but it will also harm our efforts to recruit new teachers to our rural districts. This is my 17th year teaching in my district. It is my husband's 19th year and my mom's 18th year. We all have master's degrees and student loan debt. We are all back to living paycheck to paycheck due to inflation. Quite honestly, we have talked about the possibility of needing to find a different profession or even having to leave our community altogether. The Commission on School Funding was passed by this body with determining what optimal funding was for our state. After years of work, they have met that objective and presented their plan to the legislator. Now it is time for you to implement their recommendations. In doing so, you will bring us one step closer to Time for 20, which invests in all of our students by ensuring competitive pay for all of our educators across the entire state so that we can ensure our educators stay in the profession and perhaps more importantly, enter the profession. Our students deserve to have highly qualified educators and those highly qualified educators deserve to be paid their worth. Investing in educators is an investment into the education of our youth. Thank you for your time. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and committee members. My name is Carrie Finn and I work as a clinical aide in the health office at Pioneer Academy in Carson City. I'm also the president of the Carson Educational Support Association. I am speaking today in support of the Time for 20 campaign. Without education support professionals such as bus drivers, bus attendants, clinical aides, nurses, paraprofessionals, nutrition workers, custodians, IT workers, administrative assistants, librarians, and building ground and maintenance workers, schools cannot operate properly. Teachers cannot be the teachers they need to be, and students cannot get the education they deserve. Education support professionals keep our schools healthy, safe, and engaged so that they will be ready to learn. We have all witnessed firsthand the awesome impact these dedicated professionals have had on every student they encounter. Each one is a positive role model and plays a key role in making our public schools great for every student. Too many education support professionals earn below poverty level wages and have to work two or even three jobs just to make ends meet. It sadly speaks of the income levels when we have education support professionals living in their cars or in campgrounds. Time for 20 isn't a campaign for raises. It's a campaign for a living wage, which I think really changes the narrative. Without proper funding to retain and hire these professionals, districts are losing them at a rapid pace. People who might be interested in these positions are finding better paying jobs elsewhere and a much safer working environment. Education support professionals go into education because they have a passion for working with students, but they must also be able to support their families. In closing, please consider the ramifications to education across the state of Nevada by not having education support professionals in schools due to a lack of proper funding for all districts. Thank you for your consideration.